Fall is by far my most favorite season. And for us plant enthusiasts who live in regions that actually get to experience all four seasons, the crisp fall air on our skin and immediate desire to make everything cozy is not only a fun cue that fall is coming, winter is coming, it's time to prepare to hibernate. It's also an important cue to begin to prepare to bring any house plant that has summered outside in the long sun-soaked days to come back inside for winter, to turn our homes into the lush green oases as the ground is covered in snow. You might think that this process of bringing plants indoors after a summer outside is as simple as picking up the pots on your porch and bringing them indoors, but there are several steps seven in particular, that I'm going to recommend you follow this season to ensure that your plants remain happy and healthy in this transition. Welcome back. Welcome to the Growing Joy podcast, where we not only learn how to care for plants successfully, but how to simply and affordably use our plant babies to cultivate more joy in our lives. I'm Maria, author of Growing Joy, the Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness, speaker, podcaster, and most importantly, an epic plant killer turned happy plant lady. On Growing Joy, you'll find conversations about plant care, plant community, and wellness through the lens of plants. Plant care is self-care on Growing Joy, the podcast. Hello, my plant friends. I hope you've had beautifully planty weeks as per usual. If you're new here, welcome. Welcome home. I'm your host, Maria Fiella, and I am obsessed with helping everybody in this community care for plants successfully and cultivate joy because of it. I think plant care is an amazing form of self-care and a fabulous wellness tool. And if you're an OG listener, if you're a repeat listener, welcome back. Welcome home, my friends. I'm so honored that you choose to come back to this podcast on a weekly basis, and I'm even more honored to be a part of your planty journey. Today is a solo episode all about what fall means for our houseplants and why it is so important to bring them indoors if they've been outside for the summer. I want to dive right in, but before we dive in, I just want to say a quick welcome, a quick shout out to three members of this community, Becca N, Kelly M, and Kelly L, double Kellys, Kelly M and Kelly L. Welcome to the Growing Joy Garden Society. I am so excited that you've chosen to join our private online community that's algorithm and troll free. If you don't know what the Growing Joy Garden Society is already, it is my platform for my international community of listeners for our group of plant friends. And it's dedicated to help you make new plant friends, propagate your plant care knowledge and grow more joy in your life. It is available for iOS and Android app, or you can access it on the computer. It's the plantiest and kindest corner of the internet. And if you've been listening to the show, it's an amazing way to support this podcast and the business. We closed our Patreon down. The subscriptions to the community platform are what helped me support our editors and all the amazing plant people that work on the podcast to bring this to you for free on a weekly basis. So if you're interested in joining us, you can go to jointhegardensociety.com and join us. Now, how to bring your plants indoors for the winter the how and the why. So before we dive into the nitty gritty, let's talk about why it's essential to bring your plants indoors during the winter. You might think, well, why can't I just like let them go dormant outside, right? And then they'll just come back to life in the spring and summer like all the other plants outside. Yeah, that's fair. I hear you. However, houseplants are a little bit different because they're most of the houseplants that we have are tropical. So they thrive in that tropical environment. Think Florida, think the tropics, think, you know, your recent beach vacation, that humid, warm, balmy weather. That's why they do so well outdoors in the summer. But tropical plants are not prepared for winter. They are not prepared for snow. They are not prepared for cold snaps, right? So in the fall and winter, the temperatures drop, humidity drops, and the light levels decrease. So the amount of light in the day decreases. And those three things are a nightmare for tropical plants, aka our houseplants. So it's crucial to bring them inside before those cold snaps start in order to make sure that they're happy and healthy and that they can make it through the winter. And they're going to do great indoors, right? Because they're houseplants. Bringing plants outdoors for the summer is awesome because they do get exposure to more light than they would indoors. They get to bask in that summer humidity that might not be as obvious indoors because we have air conditioning. It can accelerate rapid growth throughout the summer. So that's fabulous. You had a fiddly fig that like shot up a foot in the summer. And now you got to bring it indoors before those cold snaps hit, which will send your plants into misery. (laughs) 
But no fear, I've got you covered. All you got to do is follow these seven steps in this episode and you're going to be good to go and your houseplants are going to be totally happy. We're going to bring them inside for the winter and offer them a beautiful, cozy sanctuary where they'll continue to thrive. And also the winter, I feel like, is the most important season for houseplant parents because it's when we are indoors and we get this opportunity to cultivate this indoor oasis, this indoor jungle, even if there's snow outside. I mean, one of my favorite, I live in an area of the United States where we have snow eight months a year. There's always snow outside. And in the deep winter in February, one of my favorite things to do is look outside my window, see the snow flurries, see the two feet of snow outside, but have this jungle balmy vibe in my living room with all of my monsteras and my begonias and my hoyas, you know, giving me a vacation feel, even though I'm buried in snow and can barely get out of my driveway. So it's seven steps to go through. I've broken them down into three different phases of bringing your plants indoors. The phases are preparation, transition, and maintenance. So let's dive right in. Preparation. There are three things you want to do before you bring your plants indoors. Do not just pick up the pots and bring them inside and put them next to your plants. Plants that have been summering outdoors have been exposed to a lot of disease and pests that your indoor plants have not been exposed to. So we don't want any hitchhikers riding along on the underside of our plants' leaves coming inside and wreaking havoc on our entire collections. So before you bring your plants indoors, you're going to check them very thoroughly for pests. And this is what you need to check. Obviously, you're going to check the top of the leaves, right? And if your plant is flowering, you're going to check the flowers. If you're looking down on the plant, you're going to look and see if there are pests. You're going to look for webbing. You're going to look for little white fuzzy balls. You're going to look for anything that might be moving on top of the leaves, right? So that's number one. Then you're going to look on the underside of your plant leaves. Pests love to hide from us. (laughs) They like to find cozy little nooks, just like we like to create cozy little nooks in the in the winter for ourselves. They look for nooks on the undersides of plant leaves. So you need to flip the leaf over and look at all of those leaves to see if you can find signs of pests. You want to look at the intersection of the stem and the leaf to see if there's any webbing. Webbing is a big sign for spider mites or a bunch of other pests that you do not want to bring inside. And if you see any pests, you're obviously going to try and manually remove them. Then I highly recommend whether or not you see pests, take your hose and spray down all of your plants. If you don't have a hose, if you don't have access to a hose, I didn't have access to a hose when I was living in New York City. Put those plants first step when you bring them inside, you're putting them in your bathtub and you're giving them a thorough wash down. You're going to spray them on top of the plants. So the water runs down the tops of the leaves. You're going to flip the leaves over and give them a good spray down, right? You're basically going to give them a a good spray, like put your thumb on the hose so they get a good strong spray to try and knock off any pests that are there. You're also going to kind of drench your soil with water. You want to give your soil kind of a good drench. I've seen plants that have spiders in the soil when they're outside and you got to give them a good rinse, you got to give the soil a good water so that the spiders kind of crawl out. I know that's gross, but it's true, right? Spiders are cool. No shade against spiders. And then if this is a part of your plant care practice, this is where you're going to spray your plant down with a horticultural spray. Neem oil, horticultural spray. Everybody has their different types that they love. Leslie and I are going to do a whole episode on this in the future. So stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. We're going to do a plant first aid kit episode coming soon. But you're going to spray down with the horticultural spray that you know, like, and trust. And that's also going to ideally kill pests that you don't see and kind of create this like protective layer. I also advise before you bring your plants indoors to prune any weird leaves, weird things that have happened. When you put your house plants outdoors, they're subject to way more of an adverse environment than indoors. So they've probably had a leaf get knocked over and snapped, you know, and maybe that leaf has turned brown. There's probably yellowing leaves. There's probably burned leaves, right? Prune all of the weird looking parts of your plant off. Number one, because the plant doesn't need those things, right? But number two, you want to be able to monitor your plants once you bring them inside to make sure that nothing else is happening. So you want to bring a perfectly kind of green, let's take a a monstera, for example. 
I want to bring a perfectly green monstera inside so that if those leaves start to turn yellow or brown or something weird starts to happen, I know that that change happened once I brought those plants indoors. If the monstera that I brought indoors had yellow leaves that I didn't prune and I brought them inside, it might just be harder to figure out and understand is this a yellow leaf from the outdoor period or is this a yellow leaf and something actively is happening with my plant when we bring it indoors, right? So you're going to want to give a prune. If anything has gotten weird and leggy because it's been outside, hack those off. Just bring back a nice, tidy plant that you can monitor really well. If the plant isn't too large, I also highly suggest taking the plant out of the pot and checking the soil. If your plant is outside, little, you know, insects and little friends might be burrowing holes in the soil, right? So if you take the plant out of its pot, you're going to be able to inspect the soil. You'll be able to just make sure that there aren't like crazy amounts of spiders coming out. I know I keep talking about the spiders, but this happened to my friend. And also you want to check if your plant is root bound. In the summer, your plant has probably grown a tremendous amount if they've been exposed to all this sunlight. And what happens above happens below. So if your plant has put off a ton of leaf growth, it's probably grown more roots. So you don't want to bring a tremendously root bound plant indoors for the winter and then have it kind of suffer. This is kind of a controversial topic. You see different suggestions, but my suggestion is going to be don't let your plant be pot bound for eight months as it's indoors for the winter. Make sure that if that plant needs to be repotted, if it needs to be up potted, potted up a size, if you need to give the roots a prune, take care of the roots and make sure that you're bringing in healthy leaves and healthy roots inside in the winter. Set yourself and your plant up for success. If you're doing either of these, you should be doing it with Espoma Organics a family-owned and operated company dedicated to making safe indoor and outdoor gardening products for people, pets, and the planet. Whenever you're planting, for fall or for any season, when you're putting plants in the earth, you should always pop them up with Espoma's Biotone Starter Plus. It is the ultimate starter plant food. It's a rich blend of the finest natural and organic ingredients, and it's enhanced with beneficial microbes, humates, and mycorrhizae, and all of those things help the plants establish faster, grow deeper roots, and grow bigger blooms. And there's never any sludges or fillers used with Espoma products. They're amazing. And then once the plants are established and they've grown their roots and they're starting to grow, you can follow up and feed them with Espoma's amazing line of fertilizers called Tones. They're kind of famous for their lines of tones, especially their holly tone. But this line of fertilizers are tones they've made specifically for whatever different types of plants you're growing. So they have garden tone, holly tone, flower tone, plant tone, rose tone, berry tone, bulb tone, tree tone. Whatever type of plants you're growing, they have a tone for it. That's tailored specifically for that type of plant to keep them happy and healthy. And the consistency with Osfoma products is always on point because they have a state-of-the-art solar-powered manufacturing facility. To learn more about their indoor and outdoor products, visit espoma.com to see where your local Espoma dealers are, or you can click the link in the show notes to go to my Amazon storefront where I have a curated list of my Espoma favorites. Plant friends, if you liked my book, Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness, I have another book to introduce to you by my friend, my plant friend, Camille Bell Hill. It's called Happy Plants, Happy You. And similar to Growing Joy, it's another book about plant care and self-care. In Happy Plants, Happy You, you'll learn how houseplants can help you avoid burnout and bring a healthy focus to your own self-care. As it turns out, when you tend to your houseplants, you're tending to yourself. Sound familiar? Camille dives into advice on avoiding vampire relationships with plants and people that suck you dry, a wish list of the best tools for houseplant parents, how to date several plants before settling on the best ones for you, and how to give up the illusion of control and be okay with it when it comes to your plants. So pick up Happy Plants, Happy You at your local bookstore, bookshop.org, Barnes & Noble, or Amazon.com. That's Happy Plant, Happy You by Camille Bell Hill, wherever books are sold. Congrats, Camille. So prep, we're checking for pests. We're giving a wash down. We're spraying with horticultural spray, if that's your journey. And we're checking the roots, checking the soil and making any tweaks if necessary. Once your plant is primed and ready, it's time to bring the plant indoors. But before you start the haul, the migration of the plants inside, I wanted to give you a couple of things to keep in mind for this transitional period that the plant is going to go through once you bring it indoors. Number one, if you can, this is high maintenance There have been seasons where I've done this and seasons where I haven't done this just based on my time and if I know a cold snap is coming. 
you want to ideally transition your plant slowly. So if my Monstera, let's just you go with my Monstera for this whole episode. So if my beautiful green Monstera was out in direct sunlight outdoors, that is so much more sunlight than it's getting inside unless I put it under a grow light. So instead of just taking that plant from direct sunlight outdoors to like a medium light corner in my home, I want to move that plant to a lower light scenario outdoors first, like a week before I bring it inside. So that plant can slowly start to get used to less light exposure before you just shock it and bring it indoors, which is going to be so much less light. I've seen people recommend that you can also like bring your plants inside for a few hours and then put them back outside. If you have the time, space, energy to do that, you should. That would be ideal, but I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't do that. But if I do have plants in full sun outdoors, I'll try and move them into the shade first before I move them inside because you don't want them to get shocked. A lot of ficus in particular, like if you shock them with a change in light or a change in temperature too much, all of their leaves are going to drop. It's like an adaptive behavior. So you want to try and avoid that. And avoiding that is making the transition as easy as possible. On the other side of that, knowing that your plants are coming from much more light exposure, you want to make sure that when you bring them indoors, you are putting them in a well-lit area. Do not bring a plant that has been in high light outside into your lowest light corner of your house. You want to find wherever indoors has the most light, that's probably where that plant is going to want to be, even if it's just for a transitional period, right? Because the most light in your house is still going to be tremendously less light than whatever it was outdoors. So if you're in North America, south-facing windows are going to be amazing. That's going to be ideal, but also grow lights. I mean, I'm a grow light girly. I've got five grow lights in my house. And I know when I bring my plants indoors, I put them under my grow lights for sure. Like they'll get the prime grow light spot, at least for those first couple of months. And then once everybody's settled in, I might rearrange everyone. You also want to be mindful of humidity. You know, the humidity where I live, once again, I live, I get all four seasons. My house is as low as 14% humidity in the winter. And as high as it's in the middle of the summer right now, and it's 62% humidity, right? So 14% to 62% humidity, that's a huge difference. And outdoors, it's more like, you know, 70% humidity. So that plant is going to go from this outdoor humid summer environment to a very dry environment indoors because we have forced air. You want to be mindful of that. If you have a humidifier, this is a great time to run a humidifier near your plants to make sure that you're upping that humidity to help with your plants transition back inside. So those are a few things to be mindful of. Now, this sixth tip, please do not skip this. Please do not skip number six that I'm about to tell you, even if you skip all the other things that I told you, right? So even if you just pick your pot up, you bring it inside, you don't wash it off, you don't inspect for pests, you don't do any of that. You just pick your pot up and you bring it inside. Do this, what I'm about to tell you. Quarantine your plants, okay? At least for two weeks, ideally for 30 days. You do not want to bring your plants and put them next to the plants, the house plants that you've had in your home the entire time. Because if there is an unforeseen hitchhiker, if you did not find that one spider mite that is just nestled, ready to multiply once it gets into your house, this is where you can really wreak havoc with a houseplant collection. So isolate your plants in a space where if there are pests, you can mitigate them, you can manage them so that the pests don't spread to your whole collection. Quarantine them for as much as possible. 30 days is ideal. Two weeks is fine, even if it's a week, but you want to be able to isolate them and check them like every day for pests just to make sure that nothing's hitchhiking in. Once again, I'm sorry this feels <laughs> almost doomsday I I don't mean to like draw fear. I know multiple people that this has happened to, and so I just want to save you some pain in the future. Okay, we're into the next phase, maintenance. Congratulations. Your houseplants are safely indoors. They are safely pest-free. You have gone through your quarantine time. You have shuffled them around your apartment. You've had so much fun designing your space and making this beautiful planty oasis. I'm thrilled for you. Congratulations. And now it's time to do houseplant maintenance throughout the winter. You're going to treat these houseplants just like you're going to treat any of your other houseplants, right? However, there are two things you want to be mindful of when going from outside to inside. With watering, be cautious not to overwater your plants at this time and be cautious not to underwater your plants at this time. And this is where you becoming the super sleuth, really knowing your plants comes into play. But understand that, you know, your plants in the summer outdoors were probably getting more water than they were indoors because they were exposed to so much more light. So now that you're bringing those plants inside, they're exposed to much less light. They're going to be doing photosynthesis less. They're going to need less water, right? 
you're going to want to be mindful of the soil and when it dries out and when you water. For those first couple of months, it might be on the same routine as your houseplants. It might not. I'm just saying keep a mindful eye on those plants that were outside that have come back in. I always like to say never water wet soil, right? Unless it's like an epic maiden hair fern or something. You're rarely watering wet soil. So feel the soil first before it is time to water again. And the other thing that you can think about is when you're checking, and this is just a growing joy mindfulness tip, but when you're checking your soil, use it as a mindful moment. So how many senses can you engage in this moment of monitoring your soil's moisture? You're putting your finger in the soil, but don't just jam your finger in the soil and pull it out, right? Have like a mindful, tender moment. Put your finger in the soil, rub the soil between your two fingers, right? So that's your feel sense. Can you smell the soil? Can you look at the soil? You know, wet soil looks dark brown. Dry soil looks light brown. So just with your eye, right? Can you gauge how dry the soil is just with your eye? Can you pick the pot up and feel the weight of the pot? Because once you get to know your plants, you'll be able to understand just by picking up the pot if the soil is saturated or not, because saturated soil is obviously heavier than other soils. Don't taste the soil. Let's leave that sense out. But how many of your senses can you engage in this moment? Can you take a couple deep breaths? Can you come back to yourself as you're noticing the moisture of your soil? Just give yourself a mindful moment as you're going through this. Plant friends, I just returned from the most amazing vacation in Italy. And particularly what made it so amazing is the work that I did before I left to refresh my Italian with Rosetta Stone. I've been prepping for this trip to Italy for the last several months with daily doses of Rosetta Stone on their easy to use platform and app. It makes learning a language or refreshing a language so easy and I had so much fun while doing it. It was a great way to wake my brain up in the morning. If you have international travel coming up, I gotta tell you, knowing the basics of the local language helps so much much. When we were in Italy, we were able to avoid the tourist traps and we were able to really plug into the culture, right? That's why you travel internationally. If you've had learning a language on your bucket list, Rosetta Stone has been the expert in language learning for 30 years. They've helped millions of people build the fluency and confidence to speak new languages through immersion. It even has this cool speech recognition feature, which actually tracks how you're pronouncing the language and gives you feedback on how to pronounce it with a more authentic accent. Whether you want to refresh a language skill you learned a while ago, like I did. Maybe you want to learn a new language to get the most out of your travel. Rosetta Stone can help get you there. They have 25 languages to choose from and a lifetime membership. So I learned Italian this year, but because I have the lifetime membership, I can learn Spanish or Chinese next year or in 10 years. And they're giving you an insane discount. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a limited time, Growing Joy listeners get 50% off Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership. That's 50% off unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Plan friend, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash today. That's rosetta, R-O-S-E-T-T-A, stone.com slash today. Hot take plant friends, there is no one right starter plant. There, I said it. And you know what? While I'm at it, there are also no real plant killers in the world. There are just people who have not figured out their right plants for their lifestyle. This is why I created the free Plant Parent Personality Test. Because Plant Friend, I want you to get thriving alongside your houseplants as quickly as possible. So I made this cutie little Plant Parent Personality Quiz that's totally free for you on my website to take the guesswork out of building your plant collection effortlessly and joyfully. After speaking to thousands of members in our community, I realized that there are about five key plant parent personalities, each one with their unique set of strengths, weaknesses, and a unique set of plants that thrive under their care. For example, a mindful plant parent, someone who wants to engage with their plants daily, use them in their morning routines. If someone gifted that plant parent a succulent and they watered it every day, that succulent would die immediately. However... That drought-resistant succulent is a perfect match for a low-key plant parent, which is someone who travels, has kids, is busy, doesn't have time to engage with their plants every day. They're looking to engage with their plants more like once a week or once every couple of weeks. In addition, obviously, to understanding your light and basic plant care that we provide on this podcast, Happy Plant Parenthood is all about discovering your personality and then picking the right house plants to go with it. It's that simple. No more stressing over your collection. 
So what plant parent personality type are you, plant friend? All you got to do to find out is take my free quiz on my website and let me know. You can access it at growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality. After taking the test, you'll get an email with a list of plants, podcast episodes, and planty projects that I think would light you specifically up like a full spectrum grow light. So once again, that's growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality for your free plant parent personality test results. Hot take plant friends, there is no one right starter plant. There, I said it. And you know what? While I'm at it, there are also no real plant killers in the world. There are just people who have not figured out their right plants for their lifestyle. This is why I created the free Plant Parent Personality Test, because Plant Friend, I want you to get thriving alongside your houseplants as quickly as possible, so I made this cutie little Plant Parent Personality Quiz that's totally free for you on my website to take the guesswork out of building your plant collection effortlessly and joyfully. After speaking to thousands of members in our community, I realized that there are about five key plant parent personalities, each one with their unique set of strengths, weaknesses, and a unique set of plants that thrive under their care. For example, a mindful plant parent, someone who wants to engage with their plants daily, use them in their morning routines. If someone gifted that plant parent a succulent and they watered it every day, that succulent would die immediately. However... That drought-resistant succulent is a perfect match for a low-key plant parent, which is someone who travels, has kids, is busy, doesn't have time to engage with their plants every day. They're looking to engage with their plants more like once a week or once every couple of weeks. In addition, obviously, to understanding your light and basic plant care that we provide on this podcast, Happy Plant Parenthood is all about discovering your personality and then picking the right house plants to go with it. It's that simple. No more stressing over your collection. So what plant parent personality type are you, plant friend? All you got to do to find out is take my free quiz on my website and let me know. You can access it at growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality. After taking the test, you'll get an email with a list of plants, podcast episodes, and planty projects that I think would light you specifically up like a full spectrum grow light. So once again, that's growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality for your free plant parent personality test results. And also fertilization. So in the summer, you might have been fertilizing your plants. My rule of thumb with fertilization is fertilize your plants when you're seeing new growth. So if you bring your plants indoors and you're putting them under a grow light and the plants are still growing, continue fertilizing your plants. I don't necessarily agree with the whole like, don't fertilize your plants in the winter. If your plants are growing, if you have southern facing windows, if you have grow lights and your plants are growing and putting off new leaves and roots, they could use some nutritional support. But in general, when you bring your plants indoors, they're probably going to stop growing or they're going to really slow their growth and they're not going to need as much fertilization. So standard practice is to really wind back the watering and wind back the fertilization throughout the winter and be mindful of that. Shout out to Espoma Organic Indoor Houseplant Fertilizer. I love it. It's so easy. I just put it in my watering can and I use that year round because it's super gentle it's like a very kind of diluted, gentle formula. So I sometimes, when I remember or when I have it available, I'll go through phases where I'll just put like a cap of it in my watering can, like at all times. And that's it, plant friends. Those are my seven tips for bringing your plants indoors. Some people call this winterizing your plants. Some people call this bringing it indoors for the fall and winter. I wish you the greatest success. I wish you a cozy fall and a cozy winter. For me, the fall and the winter is really when my passion for houseplants blooms and grows, for lack of a, a better pun, because we're indoors so much more. We're cozy. We're nesting. I'm wanting to style my houseplants. I'm wanting to drink my coffee with them in the morning. I'm wanting to be around them because of how much more time we're spending inside and how much our houseplants can be a invitation to reconnect with nature, even if you've got to be inside because it's negative four degrees out, right? They're the greatest. And I hope this episode helps you set them up for success so you don't have any losses in this season, this period. And eventually winter will subside. The days will start growing longer again. And it's time to bring your plants outdoors again to soak up the sunshine. Winter also, just like heads up, great time for grow lights. Like I said, I have five grow lights. I am obsessed with grow lights. <laughs> They mimic the sun's rays. It's a way for you to just ensure that your plants have enough light to bloom and grow and continue growing if you want your plants to continue growing in the summer, I mean, in the winter and not just go dormant. 
all of my grow light recommendations, the ones that I have, we have sponsors that have amazing discount codes for you. We'll throw them in the show notes. I love Soltech Solutions and Modern Sprout. Those are where all my grow lights are from. And last but not least, remember that every plant is unique, right? So take all of this advice with a grain of salt. These episodes are all about empowering you to have the information to answer your own questions, right? So I gave you these seven steps. You will come to know what of these seven steps are appropriate for your plants and which plants. But this is really just all about empowering you to have all the information you need at your fingertips to then pick and choose what is the right option and choice for you and your beautiful plant babies. Because I'm obsessed with you and I'm obsessed with (laughs) making content for you and helping you on your planty journey. I would love to see your success with bringing your plants indoors. I would love to see your plant collections. Please post photos of your plant collections in the Growing Jerry Garden Society app if you're a part of it, or you can tag me on socials on Instagram or TikTok at Growing Joy with Maria. Show me the strategies. Show me your processes of bringing your plants indoors. I'd love to see them. I hope you have beautifully planty weeks. I know that this episode is getting released a little early before most people will experience fall, but also, you know, with the changing of the seasons with the autumnal equinox, I hope you enjoy the shifts that are happening externally and use them as an opportunity to reflect on the shifts that are happening internally as well. And until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing joy. Plant friend, thank you so much for tuning in today. If you like what you heard, make sure that you're subscribed to the show so you don't miss an episode. We have incredible episodes lined up in 2023, and I don't want you to miss one topic. And while you're subscribing, would you mind clicking over to the review section and leaving us a review? Reviews are tremendously helpful for the growth of the podcast, so I thank you in advance for helping this podcast reach as many planty earbuds as possible across the globe. If you're looking for more opportunities to grow as a plant parent with Growing Joy content, we've got a ton of free options for you. First, there's the Plant Parent Personality Test. It's so fun. It takes literally three minutes to complete. You take the test, you get your Plant Parent Personality Profile and a curated list of plants, projects, and podcast episodes that are right up your alley, tailored just for you, inspired by your results. The link is in the show notes. Make sure to let me know what your personality is after you take the test. If you're looking to uplevel your plant parent game, check out my website. We've got a bunch of free guides that you can download on topics like understanding natural light, which is actually a three-day worksheet, and nine ways to green up your office if you need to bring a little bit of planty joy into your work life. And finally, I want to invite you to join the plantiest and kindest corner of the internet, my online garden society. It's both a web platform and an iOS and Android app. It allows our listeners to get together in an algorithm and troll-free online space to swap plant care tips, humble brag about plant wins, and get support when you have plant fails. We have monthly live planty show and tells on Zoom, which are so fun, and even have a living library of planty book recommendations sourced from our community. You can go to jointhegardensociety.com to grab your membership. And for anything else, plant friend, I am here for you. Feel free to drop me a line, whether you have an idea for an episode, an event, or maybe you're even a planty business interested in sponsoring the show. And of course, following me on Instagram and TikTok for daily planty silliness, musings, and tips is always recommended. You can find me across socials at Growing Joy with Maria. Thank you again so much for listening. It is truly my honor and life's delight to help you keep blooming and keep growing joy. Plant care is self-care on Growing Joy, the podcast. Make new plant friends, propagate knowledge, and grow some freaking joy. That's the motto of the Growing Joy Garden Society app and platform, otherwise known as the plantiest and kindest corner of the internet. If you've been an OG listener or a longtime listener, you might also know this app and platform as the Bloom and Grow Garden Party, but with the rebrand, we've rebranded it to the Growing Joy Garden Society. No trolls allowed, kind plant friends only. And if you haven't heard about the society yet, Plant Friend, you got to join. It's my online community that you can access via iOS or Android app or on your computer that I built to connect our international community of plant friends so we can all nerd out together about plants and celebrate our passion for our beloved plant babies. We have members literally all over the world. I'm so in love with this community of sweet plant friends. I can't say enough amazing things about them. But also there's a lot of really cool features about the app you might be interested in. 
There's dedicated hashtags to all sorts of different subsects of planty passions like houseplants, gardening, plant-inspired DIY projects, growing joy, plants and pets, and so many more. There's a plantrepreneur group. So if you're a planty entrepreneur and you want to connect with other planty entrepreneurs, you can join that group to connect and network. There's a plant swap section. Plus, the entire app, and this is my favorite part, is entirely searchable. So say you want to learn more about Hoya, you type the word Hoya into the search bar, and literally every post ever created about Hoya will Will pop up so you can click in, see what other people have been posting about Hoya and learn on your own and crowdsource hair information. It's so cool. But last but not least, it's an amazing way to support the show. Your monthly membership not only goes to sustaining the platform, but it also supports my team of editors, writers, and a community manager that help the world of Bloom and Grow keep growing. So come join us. All you got to do is go to jointhegardensociety.com and sign up for the community plan. Once again, you go to jointhegardensociety.com and click Click the community plan. Hot take plant friends. There is no one right starter plant. There, I said it. And you know what? While I'm at it, there are also no real plant killers in the world. There are just people who have not figured out their right plants for their lifestyle. This is why I created the free Plant Parent Personality Test, because Plant Friend, I want you to get thriving alongside your houseplants as quickly as possible, so I made this cutie little Plant Parent Personality Quiz that's totally free for you on my website to take the guesswork out of building your plant collection effortlessly and joyfully. After speaking to thousands of members in our community, I realized that there are about five key plant parent personalities, each one with their unique set of strengths, weaknesses, and a unique set of plants that thrive under their care. For example, a mindful plant parent, someone who wants to engage with their plants daily, use them in their morning routines. If someone gifted that plant parent a succulent and they watered it every day, that succulent would die immediately. However... That drought-resistant succulent is a perfect match for a low-key plant parent, which is someone who travels, has kids, is busy, doesn't have time to engage with their plants every day. They're looking to engage with their plants more like once a week or once every couple of weeks. In addition, obviously, to understanding your light and basic plant care that we provide on this podcast, Happy Plant Parenthood is all about discovering your personality and then picking the right house plants to go with it. It's that simple. No more stressing over your collection. So what plant parent personality type are you, plant friend? All you got to do to find out is take my free quiz on my website and let me know. You can access it at growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality. After taking the test, you'll get an email with a list of plants, podcast episodes, and planty projects that I think would light you specifically up like a full spectrum grow light. So once again, that's growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality for your free plant parent personality test results. Mm-hmm. 